Hello everyone, welcome to Aptera Owners Club. In this video, we're gonna talk about safety and why I think the Aptera will be safer than many people think. When I first told several of my friends that I, was, I ordered this car, the first thing that several of them said to me is, that thing is tiny, it's probably a death trap. Now, um, I ride a bike to work every day and um, I've been riding a bike to work every day for the past 13 years and probably put about 50,000 miles on a bicycle. So I'm kind of okay with sacrificing a little bit of quote safety uh, for efficiency. And I just understand as someone who rides a bicycle, I just have to be more aware of my surroundings to be safe. Um, and I think I'll just be so much safer in an Aptera than on a bicycle. But that being said, I think there's several reasons that um, the Aptera is a lot safer than uh, people think. So when people look at this car, it looks very light, and it is, and it looks, um, you know, kind of insect-like almost, like it would be fragile, and they equate that to mean that it's not going to be safe. But if you actually look at the pictures of it, here's a picture that uh, Aptera released a few days ago with it parked next to some Model 3s, um, and ooh, what is this? this is a Mini Cooper back here. It, it, if, if you look at it, it's not really that small, but the weight of the Aptera is about 1,800 pounds to maybe 2,000 pounds, depending on what kind of battery you get in it. So that's going to be, um, every other car on the road is going to be about 50% to 100% or even a little more heavier than this thing. And people equate um, heavier, bigger vehicles with being safer. And all things being equal, um, a heavier vehicle is going to be safer than a lighter vehicle um, in direct collisions. But all things aren't equal. And also, I looked up this table from the uh, National Highway Safety Transportation Administration. This is their data from 2019, which is the most recent data they have. And they have basically a compilation of all the accidents that happened in the United States and what kind of accidents they were. And the type of accident where vehicle mass is going to matter the most is, is, an, is in a head-on collision. And so if you look at a head-on collision, um, they represent only 2.7% of accidents. Um, and so in the other accidents, vehicle mass, it doesn't really matter as much. The most common, as you can see, is a rear-end accident. And, you know, that's like... Uh, probably from following too close, not paying attention. Um, and those, the vehicle mass, it does matter, but not nearly to the same degree. Now, the other thing to understand is that head-on collisions are the most dangerous type of collisions. So if you look at just fatal accidents, they do represent about, oh, excuse me, about 10.9 uh, or 11% of all um, accidents. Now, the other thing to understand is that Collisions with fixed objects represent 29% of all fatal accidents. So the, the heavier vehicle might help you out in these 11% of the head-on collisions, but they're going to hurt you in these collisions with fixed objects because a heavier car is going to have more kinetic energy, and you have to dissipate more kinetic energy when you hit a fixed object. So a heavier vehicle probably hurts you in 29% uh, in, in of fatal accidents, and helps you a little bit in 11% of um, accidents. So a heavier vehicle is not necessarily a safer vehicle if you just look at the statistics. It's gonna hurt you in about 30% and help you in about 1%. And I saw this video um, which shows how two similar mass vehicles are gonna have totally different um, safeties based on the way they're constructed. So this is showing um, the differences that cars have made. So they, they crashed the 1959 Chevrolet Bel Air with a 2009 um, Chevy Malibu. I looked at the weights. The uh, Bel Air is about 3,500 pounds. The Malibu is about 3,400 pounds. Both end up looking like mangled metal, but the newer car disperses the energy of the impact in a totally different way. Instead of a steering column slamming into his body, the driver of the Malibu gets... I mean, look at this guy in the Bel Air. He got totally crushed, and it's a slightly heavier car. So all things being equal it, um, is not true based on the way the car is built. 
So why do I think that Aptera is going to be relatively safe? Okay, so safety kind of depends on um, a couple of things, and weight is one of them. But as we showed before, weight is probably a relatively minor component. Um, the other thing is, is basically you need to dissipate the energy of the crash and have, have as little of the energy reach the passenger or the driver as possible. So one way is to have crumple zones, and that's what a lot of modern cars have. And the other, so the way that modern cars are built is there's a crumple zone that absorbs energy, and then there's a passenger safety cell. So they try to make the passenger compartment very strong so that there's no intrusion of things into the safe, uh, into the passenger compartment. So you want the passenger compartment to be very strong, and then you want the crumple zone to dissipate a lot of energy. And what they've, what this paper shows is that fiber reinforced polymer composites, that's what an Aptera is built for, um, will dissipate about four to five times more energy uh, than steel or aluminum. So it's like 400 to 500 times more energy dissipation. And the um, passenger safety cell is very strong because composite materials are like eight to 10 times stronger than, than uh, steel. And here's an old video of some people smashing on a um, on an old this is the old 2009 Aptera body and I'm sure that they've improved the composite since then but basically the composites are extremely strong and the way you know that these composite structures work pretty well is that that's what's used in Formula One races excuse me Formula One racers and there have been some pretty nasty looking accidents in Formula One cars that people just walk away from because these composite materials are so strong and they dissipate so much energy and they can protect the passenger cell so well. This kind of makes it a bit more difficult. To so judge. these are, can, these are drivers that survived this crash you're about to see. So. I just took, took a couple of them with me. Yeah, so these guys are just talking right after that. And this crash is ridiculous. This guy right here as they exited out of goes through a, a metal barrier. So here's the back half of his car. The passenger cell went through this metal barrier. The car dissipated. So composites release energy by, um, by um, disintegrating. Um, but you can design certain parts of it to disintegrate and absorb energy and other parts of it to be strong and protect it. So this uh, composite car ran through this metal barrier. And watch, this guy just walks out of it. It is crazy. Yeah, there's the driver. I mean, he's basically okay after driving a four. You know, I don't know how, how fast he was going. I'm imagining over 100 miles an hour through that thing. And then the last thing is not only is it material, so material matters, but the shape matters because um, depending on how you shape the material, it depends. It show it can change how structurally strong it is. And if you look at the Aptera, it basically shaped like an egg. So it's basically a lot of arches. There's not very many flat panels. And so the arch structure and the spherical structure we know is the strongest shape. So it has material going for it, shape going for it, and um, it's not that small. So overall, I th you know we're gonna have to wait for the sa crash safety data to come out, but I suspect that it's gonna be a lot safer than um, people initially think by looking at it. All right, so tell me if that, if you guys agree, disagree, um, put comments below, and thanks for watching.